Welcome to the 28storms.com tropical weather update for Sunday, July 31st. The tropical disturbance just to the east of the Lesser Antilles will be the main focus, so let's get right on into it. Now, before we look at any satellite data, I want to first show the surface chart that's outlined by the Tropical Analysis Forecast Branch. Notice that the tropical wave that kicked things off is now approaching the Lesser Antilles. And it's not until you go a little bit further east, between 50 and 55 degrees west, that we find our 1,007 millibar surface low. Now with that in mind, here's the latest visible imagery, and it's shifting toward an infrared since we're going into the evening hours. But this is the tropical wave now beginning to move through the Lesser Antilles. You're already beginning to see some shower and thunderstorm activity, and that's all that convection that you see out ahead of the dominant circulation. Here it is right here. When this thing finally does develop, it's going to be more so related to that circulation to the east. But as of right now, that circulation that you're seeing right now is the primary mid-level circulation. This is not at the surface just yet. If we zoom in even more, we see why 91L has not developed enough to be considered a tropical depression. And this is somewhat what I alluded to yesterday afternoon when I said that, yes, this will develop, but in the first 24 hours I had my doubts with regards to some of the intensity forecast that this thing would immediately just begin to steadily strengthen without any troubles because this has been elongated from east to west all along for the last three or four days. And here it is, the tropical wave. There's the mid-level circulation, and this is going to be really hard to pick out, but if you look really closely around here, if you notice underneath the main cloud deck, and you start to look more toward the low levels with the lower level cloud banding, we see that there's a surface, or not even quite a surface, but more so toward the low levels than anything over here. That's the primary circulation near the surface that's going to eventually develop, and what's occurring here is the more dominant mid-level circulation is ever so gradually ripping this low level center away from the original wave axis and once the low level center makes its way underneath the mid-level circulation and this whole entire system becomes vertically stacked that is when we will begin to see tropical development now all throughout the day the tropical wave out ahead of the main mid-level circulation has had much of the convection or at least the strongest convection but I guarantee you that once that low level center becomes vertically stacked under the MLC that's when we're going to begin to see convection return here along with the primary circulation that ends up spawning this tropical cyclone and with the way the things are coming together overnight here I fully expect by tomorrow we will have a much more healthier presentation on the enhanced infrared I would be very surprised if it doesn't now what that means is that when the next recon flies in, more than likely tomorrow, I would surely bet that this will at least be a tropical depression. And since this is now so close to the Lesser Antilles, it's within about 36 hours away from landfall, or at least the first landfall, they will have to issue tropical storm watches and warnings for much of the leeward and even some of the northernmost windward islands. And then with time, it's going to spread on into Puerto Rico, and perhaps the watches and warnings will even extend into the eastern half of Hispaniola, including the Dominican Republic. This is the Atlantic water vapor, and this will reveal the next problem. There's really nothing that's going to overly impede tropical development that I can really see out here. You don't see any strong troughs draped across the Lesser Antilles. This is located underneath a favorable upper-level ridge with no wind shear. And the only thing that can really stop this from developing in the medium range could quite possibly be if it decides to track over the mountainous terrain of Hispaniola. As of right now, the primary models and the consensus takes it just east, more so toward Puerto Rico, or this little area of water here in between. But any deviation to the west could mean trouble for the storm, because storms have a very hard time making it over Hispaniola without significantly weakening. But if it can avoid that landmass, I guarantee you that more than likely at least this will become a hurricane especially once it gets into the western Atlantic and if you need any more supporting evidence of that if we just take a quick look at the intensity model forecast you can see that there are several models that not only take this to a hurricane but they also take it to a hurricane before it even exits the northeast Caribbean as we can see here within just the next 36 to 48 hours here's the category 1 threshold and you can see that several models already surpassed the category 1 74 mile per hour sustained winds requirement and there's a lot of models that even take this toward a Category 2 and low end Category 3 by the medium range. So that'll just have to be something that we closely monitor. The SIMS wind shear analysis may initially look a little bit misleading. You may first think that, oh, well, it's showing a lot of vertical wind shear very close to the storm. But in fact, the upper level ridge is centered exactly over the developing area of low pressure. And to the north and the south, yeah, this is some westerly wind shear, but that's going to enhance the poleward outflow jet. 
and down south we have some easterly shear below the ridge axis and that's only going to enhance the equatorward outflow channel. We can see this a little bit better if we change sources. Here's our tropical wave with the satellite overlaid underneath the upper level ridge and you can see that this is just a very favorable pattern. That upper level ridge is stacked exactly on top of the developing tropical disturbance and if we look out here toward the eastern Caribbean there is a strong lack of any dominant troughing here and that upper level ridge is just going to spread west along with our developing storm. Also before I forget to mention it this is the SIMS 850 millibar vorticity analysis and that vorticity max is still a little bit stretched out from east to west but that is beginning to strengthen a little bit here especially on the eastern side where we saw that mid-level circulation and I'm sure that by tomorrow once that low-level circulation wraps underneath that mid-level center that we saw on the infrared that this will become a lot more impressive here and we will more than likely have a tropical depression if not tropical storm Emily. We're going to show the pattern and some of the models in detail but first off here is a spaghetti model plot just to give you the main general idea this is going to be spreading into the Leeward Islands here within the next 24 to 36 hours. Many of the available models have this spreading through the islands either late Monday night or very early Tuesday morning. And the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico should also be on the lookout. By Wednesday the GFS has this sitting directly over Puerto Rico along with several of the other models and this will more than likely be either a strong tropical storm and possibly even a minimal hurricane by then so be ready for at least minimal hurricane conditions you always want to be prepared for the worst here and the same can, e can even be said for the Dominican Republic as you can see many of the models including the consensus is just off toward your east but any slight deviation or shift toward the west will place you right in the line of fire and we've also noticed this afternoon that the consensus around the four to five day period has shifted closer to the eastern Bahamas if you recall yesterday they were a little bit more into the western Atlantic this is the current low level steering pattern. This is what's primarily steering our tropical disturbance as of right now. As you can see the strong subtropical Atlantic Ridge is oriented over here in the northeast Atlantic and to the south we have a lot of strong low level easterly flow that's going to continue pushing this in the general direction of the northeast Caribbean. But between the Atlantic Ridge and the dominant subtropical ridge over the south central United States has been causing the major heat wave. Between those two features is this long wave trough and several of the models are entertaining that this will be over the central and western Atlantic for at least the next three to four maybe even five days and in fact within about 48 hours there will be a reinforcing shot coming out of the southeast Canada region and that's going to reinforce this once again for at least the next three to five days now there is some model variance as to how long that trough will persist now if it did persist this tropical system would eventually go into the northeast Caribbean and then recurve and there would be some question as to how fast or how far west would it recurve and then there's also the outside possibility that the trough lifts out and leaves the storm behind this is the 12 ZCMC forecast it doesn't have anything to start off but within 18 to 24 hours it quickly develops a low pressure center and then toward Monday evening it's taking a tropical storm over the Lesser Antilles Island chain then between 72 and 96 hours it actually takes it more toward the south and west compared to yesterday and in fact it takes it directly over the Dominican Republic and eastern portions of Haiti but as we get into the day four and day five period it begins to reemerge over the open waters of the southwest Atlantic while embedded within the Bahamas and as we get into the day six period this is restrengthening and this is now a hurricane over the northern Bahamas and fairly close to the eastern Florida Peninsula just to the northeast of Miami Florida and this certainly would suggest at least a very strong threat to the US East Coast if not a landfall down the road. We can see why if we view the mid-level pattern here notice within the first few days a very strong trough will persist here across much of the western Atlantic as we see especially within the next three days there's that reinforcing shot coming out of Atlantic Canada and the Maritimes and that's going to reinforce it for a few days but as the storm moves into the southeast Bahamas that trough is quickly now beginning to eject out to sea and as you see off the east coast of the United States it's quickly replaced by mid to upper level ridging which would suggest a more westerly or at least northwest track closer to the east coast we're going to switch over to the GFS this is the 500 millibar pattern and you still begin to see the tropical cyclone though it's now over the lesser Antilles by late Monday night into Tuesday morning 
In fact, if I had to say exactly when the center would pass over the islands based on this model, I would say about 8 a.m. local time here in the Eastern Caribbean. And look at how deep this trough is right now. And also notice how strong the southern ridge is. This is 594 decameters, and that's really helping to strengthen this trough, along with the reinforcing shot coming out of Atlantic Canada. But then within 72 hours, that trough begins to start lifting north a little bit. Meanwhile, the storm is now directly over Puerto Rico, or at least moving closer. And if we advance this into 96 hours, this is getting into Thursday afternoon. The trough is still well in place over the northern Atlantic, but it is beginning to lift. Here is the southeast ridge. It's still determined to remain over the southern plains, but the model does have it drifting ever so gradually closer to the eastern seaboard. And as this ridge at least tries to move more toward the east, and as this trough begins to lift out of the western Atlantic, we begin to see a lack of steering currents for the storm to really take advantage of, and the forward motion may actually begin to slow down here. And whenever storms begin to slow down, that makes for a very tricky forecast. As it is, we're already talking about a forecast situation that is about five to six days into the future. So anyone that could tell you with a lot of confidence right now where the system may go six to seven and eight days down the road, they either don't know what they're talking about or they're just simply lying to you because there are so many variables. As I mentioned before, if this goes over Hispaniola, this is going to greatly diminish the intensity of the tropical cyclone. And it would be a big question mark as to what type of intensity we would be dealing with once it reemerges over the Bahamas. And like I said yesterday, intensity is a big key in predicting the overall track of the storm itself. So as I advance this just for entertainment purposes as we get into the six to seven day time frame, we see that the trough lifts out. The ridge tries to build over the Carolinas, but it's not that strong and it's still primarily centered over the south central United States. And so therefore our storm just lingers for the most part over to over the northern Bahamas and east of Florida until finally another reinforcing trough begins to come in and lifts it out to sea. Now this is a prime example as to just how fickle the model forecasts are for the medium range. The operational GFS and the ensembles have done a complete 180 versus yesterday. Yesterday the operational GFS was determined to take this a little bit more toward the north which meant a much less threat to the United States, whereas the GFS ensembles had this going directly over Hispaniola, implying more of a western track. Now the operational GFS, as I showed you, is more so along the eastern half of the Hispaniola coastline, with this storm eventually going into the southeast Bahamas, and now the ensemble suggests more of a northern track out to sea. And lastly, the 12Z ECMWF came out this afternoon. We've been greatly anticipating the European to finally latch on to this storm so that we can have another reliable model to depend on and within 24 hours it does begin to show development here just to the east of the Lesser Antilles within 48 hours we have at least a tropical depression in the extreme eastern Caribbean by 72 hours it's now beginning to lift north into the western half of Puerto Rico possibly aiming toward the Dominican Republic. Also notice here is the model agreement with at least the trough over the first 72 hours. There's the big gap between the ridging across much of the mid-latitudes. By 96 hours, the system has been able to successfully avoid much of the mountainous terrain of Hispaniola by only clipping the coastline. And that trough is trying to lift out, but by 120 hours, the storm is now beginning to firmly intensify here possibly making a run already to minimal hurricane status over the extreme eastern Bahamas by day six. The initial trough is lifting out or at least deepening more so over the central Atlantic while our tropical storm, more than likely Hurricane Emily by this point, continues to intensify down here while being somewhat lost here in the overall steering flow with no dominant trough and really not much of a persistent ridge here to the north. But then by day seven, the European, unlike the Canadian and the GFS, is beginning to re-amplify the trough over the mid-Atlantic and northwest Atlantic. Thus, the reason why by day 8 we begin to see this hurricane making a recurve out to sea, but first off hitting Bermuda head-on here at 984 millibars, and by day 9 it's moving safely out to sea. So just to recap, by this time tomorrow, I firmly believe that we will have at least a tropical depression. By the time this thing makes it through the Lesser Antilles Monday night or Tuesday morning, I would be willing to bet that this will be Tropical Storm Emily. And then late Tuesday night into Wednesday morning as this begins to approach the lower half of Puerto Rico in extreme eastern Hispaniola, this could be making a run at strong Tropical Storm or minimal Category 1 hurricane status. 
and once it gets into the western Atlantic, it will more than likely be a hurricane unless it has taken the more westerly path directly over Hispaniola. So the odds of at least the eastern half of the Bahamas being threatened have gone up a little bit today. So now I advise everyone in the Bahamas to begin closely watching this storm along with everyone in the Northeast Caribbean. And all of those people should already be preparing for a landfall because the writing has been on the wall here for at least the last 72 hours. And for the rest of us in Bermuda along with the east coast of the United States, we just have to keep an eye on it. We really can't tell what this storm is going to do beyond five to six days. It's really out of the realm of possibility right now. And that just sums things up at this current time. So thanks again for checking out 28storms.com. We'll do our best to keep you informed with this ongoing situation as much as possible throughout the new week. So thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you again right here very soon.